So Adobe finally listened and added some insane masking features to Adobe Camera Raw 14 and Lightroom. Now this is coming attached with the Photoshop CC 2022 update. It's a major update to Adobe Camera Raw, but it's not something I think you need to necessarily be afraid of because while it is new, they're just taking a lot of older features and making them more accessible and easier to use and almost giving us what would look like layers in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. Now, as I said, this Adobe Camera Raw 14 comes attached with Photoshop CC 2022. I don't use Lightroom, so I'm not gonna be covering Lightroom. Now, let's just jump right in. With the release of Adobe Camera Raw 14, we have quite a few new updates here. A couple of things that you're gonna see that are noteworthy are new masking tools, a new preset pack, and a preset slider for any presets that have been essentially coded with the slider adjustment. Now, as Adobe says, the new preset slider is a beta feature, so please do keep that in mind as you use that new feature. So what I have here is four images that are going to help me discuss the new features. Now, the first thing I wanna do, one of the main reasons why I brought in four images is because I want to get your Adobe Camera Raw set up the way it should be to maximize the real estate here. So I'm gonna right click in this film strip and make this film strip vertical. Now my settings did not port over, so I do need to do that. Now what you're gonna see in our adjustments here is that nothing has really truly changed. If in Adobe Camera Raw before you had moved any of these things, like I like to have calibration under my basic settings, those are all gonna go back to the, let's say factory settings here for Adobe Camera Raw 14. So you will have to adjust those not that big of a deal, I can right click here and I can go edit show panels and then with calibration I can just move that right back up underneath my basic adjustments and then I'm set and good to go once Adobe Camera Raw refreshes. Now let's talk about the presets here first before we talk about what everyone I think wants to talk about which is the masking. So in the preset section, you're gonna see that they've added quite a few new presets here. And if you go to one of the ones that Adobe has just now given us like maybe the cinematic and we'll say CN5, you're gonna see up here at presets, we have a slider that will adjust how powerful that cinematic effect is going to be on our images. And as you see here, it does say it is a beta feature. So if there is any issues with this, keep that in mind. What I would recommend is that any presets that you have from previous individuals, this might not work on because when you make a preset, there has to be a certain, let's say, checkbox or code to make Camera Raw know that this has the slider feature enabled for it. What we also need to notice over here is our toolbar. It's gotten very thin, okay? It used to have a brush, it used to have a gradient tool, it used to have a radial filter. Now everything looks like a circle with dots around it. This is the masking section. Now, at first you're gonna be like, wait, hold on a second, hold the phone. Why is all this stuff so new? Well, in actuality, there's only really two new things that have been added here. And that's gonna be select subject and select sky, which we'll talk about in a second. Your brush, your linear gradient, your radial gradient, those are all still there. And your color range tool and your luminance range tool and your depth range tools have essentially been removed from the brush, the linear gradient and the radial gradient and added as their own masking type feature, which is actually a pretty great way to do this so that you can use a luminance range on your image without actually having to use a brush or a linear gradient or radial gradient. Now, does that mean that we lose the luminance range within those? Absolutely not. And that's where this gets really kind of fun because it becomes a stack on type of thing. You can keep stacking on these adjustments as you see fit. Let's just say we wanted to add a radial gradient to brighten up the area where the bunny is in this image. I'm gonna click on the radial gradient. Now what you'll notice is I get this little masking pane here. And with this masking pane, it says new mask. I'm gonna need to actually draw what that's going to be by clicking and dragging and moving this around. Now what you see here is a little preview of what that mask might look like. So the actual act of creating the radio gradient is nothing different than what it was before. We just now have a little box here that shows us all the masks that might be in our image, which is actually very helpful so that we don't have to go and click through all the different ones that are over here on the side and barely be able to see that little visual, little tick mark that shows us that. Now the question is, this is mask one. Can we rename this? Sure, let's click on the three dots and say rename. We'll call this bunny spot and now we know that this is the spotlight over the bunny now what we also might want to do here is change our overlay now typically the overlay that you're going to get by default through adobe camera Raw or possibly lightroom is going to be a very feathered overlay of what your mask actually looks like i do not like this to me this does not show me very well what my mask is going to look like so what i prefer to do and this is what i re recommend is go to the mask overlay change this to the color magenta number one magenta is easier to see number two move the opacity all the way up. Now we 
actually can see exactly where that mask is going to be. I show you this all the time in my education because seeing this in magenta shows exactly where the mask is going to be, which helps us really dial in where we want to put it. Now I can see that this feather needs to be increased and here I can adjust my settings. Now, if you ever want to turn the show overlay off, just click the tick button. Nothing really different than what we would have done in the past, right? Now, these settings were kind of automatically done. Let's reset those settings here, turn the overlay off, and let's brighten that up. So essentially nothing has really changed with the radial gradient tool here. Now let's say we want to add a graduated tool to maybe the top of the image to darken that down a little bit. I would say create new mask. It's gonna ask me what kind of mask do I wanna make? I wanna make a linear gradient. It's gonna be blank. Now I click and draw, press and hold shift and move that down so I can see it. And here I'm gonna reset those settings. Now I can see the overlay there and I'll make that a little bit darker, okay? And then maybe increase the highlights there Maybe increase the shadows there. What I really like about this new feature is the ability to rename this. So we can call this rename and we'll call this top grad. Now, like I said in the beginning, I can see that we almost have what we call layers in, an, in Photoshop happening right here in Adobe Camera Raw. Let's move on to the next image here. This is an image I worked on just before the new update of Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom came out. And I was about to pull my hair out when I saw that we have this new masking thing. I was like, wait, what about all my images that I've done something on before? Do I lose that stuff? The answer is no. We click on our masking section here and it actually has the older masks that I had used on this image already placed in that layer stack or the masking stack as we should call it. So you're not going to lose old masks, okay? Don't worry about that. Now, if we look here and we take a look at these masks that I've created, you can see that I had a pretty sloppy way of making masks in the past. I would essentially use a graduated filter and then try to use a brush to make things go away to separate my sky from my foreground. It wasn't necessarily the best way to operate, but it was the way that I operated. So let's see if we can make this selection here where we subtract the sky a little bit better. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to actually grab my graduated filter and move it up. That way we have the sky included in there. So with this one, this is actually going to be the foreground. So let's double click it and call it foreground, okay? Probably spelled it wrong, but who cares? Now I'm gonna press the subtract button and I'm gonna subtract the sky. So once I press subtract, I'll press select sky. Adobe's gonna work its magic and it's automatically going to know where the sky is and subtract the sky from that mask. So now my foreground mask is actually much better than it was in the past. Now for the next mask, this one here, this is gonna be for our sky, so we'll call this sky. And the last one for the foreground, I subtracted the sky. For this one, let's say add, and we'll say select sky. So now what we can see here is that this overlay that we have for our sky is much better than it was before. What this affords us is the ability to make a much better selection for our sky and for our foreground to be able to separate them a little bit better without having to use a graduated filter and then a brush to subtract things from our image. With that being said, we can still use a subtraction method for a brush. So if I were on this guy and I click here and say subtract, I can select brush and then I can start painting in any areas where I might not want that to be by subtracting with a brush, just like we would have done previously. So now what this is telling us is that we have this mask right here contains this original linear gradient, an addition of the sky, and a subtraction of what I brushed on. I really like what they've done here. This is incredible because I can see exactly what's happening within each mask of my image in a way that we don't even see that happening in Photoshop, which is actually pretty impressive. I think for a long time, people wanted layers in Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom. And what they now have is a very powerful masking feature, which kind of acts like layers, when you look at it this way. And it actually gives us a more definitive look at what we've done to those layers. Now, is it any good, I think is the question. This image, by no stretch of the imagination, is an amazing photograph, but what I wanted to do here was see if I could select the sky in this photograph, even though our sky is basically truncated by a lot of different pine needles. So let's press select sky. Once we have that sky selection, let's see the overlay. That's actually a pretty darn good selection of the sky. 
because it's feathering the areas around the pine needles. It's feathering the areas around the selection for the uh, mountains and stuff there. This is actually incredible. I didn't think it was going to be this good. So let's turn this off. Now, let's go ahead and call this layer sky. So I'm just going to double click that and call it sky. And let's go ahead and drop the exposure a little bit. Let's make that a little bit more blue and add a little bit of magenta to there. And we'll increase the intensity of this sky a little bit here. Now let's see if we can make a selection for the opposite of this in a really easy way. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on the three dots and I'm gonna say duplicate sky. So now let's rename this copy to foreground. Okay, we have this sky selection here. The really crazy thing about this, if you click the three dots next to this, you'll see that there is this invert. If we invert this, it's going to flip the selection so that now instead of it being the sky, it's going to be for the foreground. Now let's reset these settings here because I don't really like what was happening there. Turn the show overlay off. Let's warm up the foreground, add a little bit more green to that foreground, maybe brighten up that foreground a little bit here. Okay, maybe we'll reduce the highlights there to blend in those areas. Increase the shadows a little bit here to brighten up that area. And let's take a look at our before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. Now in this image, I haven't even gone into my basic adjustments yet and done anything with my basic adjustments. I still have the ability to adjust these basic settings that are going to be for the entire image also. So before I even adjusted my basic settings, I was able to make very specific selections for my foreground and background and get them dialed in, which is an extremely effective way to work. And now a very fast way to work. This would have been something extremely difficult in previous versions of Adobe Camera Raw. Let's move on to the next image. With this one, we're going to make a select subject selection. Now, I have never really seen anybody in the street hold a set of balloons grabbing onto a fence like this, but hey, you know what? You never know what you're going to find on Adobe Stock. Why I like this. There are many subjects here. We have a background subject. We have balloons. We have an individual in the foreground. We have a fence. Let's see if just looking at the nature of this image, Adobe Camera Raw can find the subject. So we're going to say select subject. Now, let's take a look at our show overlay. That's pretty darn good. Not only did it select our subject, it also got some of the flyaway hairs. Now it's gonna be missing a little bit of her handbag here, which isn't that big of a deal. And it looks like it selected some balloons. Now I'm assuming that it selected some balloons because it thinks that those are skin tones. And that's okay. Let's go ahead and reset these settings here that we had from the last time, turn our show overlay off again. And now we can go ahead and dial in the settings for our subject to get them looking exactly like we want them to look separate from our background. Man, that's pretty powerful stuff. So we'll just call this person or a girl. It's easier to spell. <laughs> we'll call this girl. Now, let's say, like I did in the last image, we want to make an inverse selection for the background. We can still do the same thing here. Let's go ahead and duplicate this selection. We'll duplicate her. Let's rename this background or BKG for background. And then we'll click on this select subject here, the three dots, and then invert. Now we have the background that we can make darker behind her outside of the subject itself. And that is some pretty awesome stuff. Users of Adobe Camera Raw and Lightroom for the longest time have been begging for layers. And I think what Adobe responded with here is actually much more powerful and beneficial to us as users. This goes beyond the realm of layers. It takes capabilities that were already present in Adobe Camera Raw and makes them much more powerful with the ability to add and subtract masks and create selections for subjects and skies. In the realm of raw processing, these are some incredible advancements. Thank you so much, Adobe. This is awesome. Now I need to go redo a ton of tutorials. Thanks.